Hi dear students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. This is Asima Dudley. Welcome to my another video on the topic Internet of Things. The last video also we were discussing about the different IoT application transport methods. And in that video we have discussed about the application layer protocol not present. In this video we will discuss about the SCADA that is Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition IoT Application Transport Method. So the next IoT Application Transport Method is SCADA. SCADA is the Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition and it is one of the most common industrial protocols in the world. This Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition is a system of software and hardware elements that allows most of the industrial organizations to control industrial processes locally or at remote locations and also to monitor gather and process real-time data then directly interact with devices such as sensors valves pumps motors and etc and also it record events into a log file then this CADA systems are crucial for industrial organizations because they help to maintain efficiency, process data for smarter decisions and also communicate system issues to help mitigate downtime. The SCADA networks can be found across various industries but the transporting data over the current IoT and the traditional networks requires certain accommodations uh, for implementing the both the protocols that is traditional devices network there needs some accommodations so we can look at this architecture of SCADA the basic SCADA architecture begins with programmable logic controls that is PLCs or remote terminal units that is RTUs. These uh, PLCs and RTUs are microcomputers that communicate with an array of objects such as a factory machines or a sensors, uh, actuators or etc. And then uh, they route the information from those objects to computers with SCADA software. The SCADA software processes and distributes or else display the data, helping operators and other employees analyze the data and make an insight from it. For example, the SCADA system quickly notifies an operator that a batch of product is showing a high in incidence of errors. The operator pauses the operation and views the SCADA system data by HMI to determine the cause of the issue. The operator reviews the data and recovers that the machine 4 was malfunctioning. Then the SCADA system's ability to notify the operator of the issue helps him to resolve it and prevent further loss of product. Here we can see the protocol stack for transporting serial DNP3 SCADA over IP. Like many other SCADA protocols, DNP3 is based on master-slave relationship. The term master in this case refers to what is typically a powerful computer located in the control center of a utility. And a slave is a remote device with computing resources found in a location such as a substation and uh, the working is the outstations monitor and collect data from the devices that indicate their state such as whether a circuit breaker is on or off and take measurements including voltage current temperature and so on this data is then transmitted to the master when it is requested or events and alarms can be sent in an 
asynchronous manner. The master also issues control commands such as to start a motor or reset a circuit breaker and logs the incoming data. Another IoT application transport method is the generic web-based protocols. So when we are saying about this generic web-based protocols, the, we'll be remembering about the Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and 4G, etc. And the more, more about generic web-based protocols, we can say the level of familiarity with generic web-based protocols is high. So therefore, these uh, programmers with basic web programming skills can work on IoT applications, and this may lead to innovative ways to deliver and handle real-time IoT data. And in the constrained, non-constrained nodes, such as this Ethernet, Wi-Fi, 4G cellular bandwidth, we use this generic web-based protocols. Then in case of constrained networks, the embedded web server software with advanced features are now implemented with very little memory, that is the range of 10 kilobytes. Another IoT application transport method is IoT application layer protocols. IoT application layer protocols are devised to run on constrained nodes. And there are some uh, features for constrained nodes, that is, this constrained nodes should be with a small compute footprint and are well adapted to the network bandwidth constraints on cellular or satellite links or constrained six LOPA networks. And uh, when considering this uh, constrained networks or the large scale deployment of constrained nodes, verbose web based and data model protocols may be too heavy for IoT applications. And this uh, error can be solved by using a new lightweight protocol that are better suited to large number of constraint nodes and networks. And uh, there are two protocols that is MQTT and COAP. This MQTT means message queuing telemetry transport and COAP means constrained application protocol. And these two are the most popular protocols come under IoT application layer protocols. Here is the assignment question for the video. Explain the IoT application transport methods. This one SCADA. Second, generic web-based protocols. And third one, IoT application layer protocols.